from Stephen Chapman's Due West, the fourth song, Sunset, from the Vancouver Chamber Choir, conducted by John Washburn. But you can hear that live in Winnipeg on Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Westworth United Church, the Winnipeg Singers, offers their final installment of their 16-17 season, a celebration of the sesquicentennial in these Canadian landscapes. And we welcome into the Diamond Lane Executive Director Pat Ray and Artistic Director Yuri Klaas. Welcome back to the show. It's so good to see you both. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. You. Hey, it's a pleasure. Okay, so first, let's let's talk about Sunday afternoon's program before we get into the meatier part of the interview, which I, I don't know if our, our listenership knows quite yet what they're in for, so this is a very special surprise. But let's talk about Sunday. What What's what's on the program? This is a celebration of, of Canada's 150th. So yes, how did it how did it happen? How did the program shape up? Well, uh, since it's an anniversary of 150 years of Confederation, we thought mm-hmm. that it would be quite appropriate to have all Canadian concert. Right. And so that's what we're doing. All Canadian composers uh, on the roster of the program, and we call it Happy Birthday Canada, Canadian Landscapes. Fantastic. So, uh, metaphorically speaking, it's also uh, musical landscapes, but actually we tied it up to a physical landscape of Canada, because what we're doing, what we're doing, we're going from province to province, from west coast to east coast, and we're representing um, pretty much all provinces of Canada, which I think is absolutely amazing. Do you get up into the territories at all? Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah. go up to <gasps> Nunavut. Amazing. Yeah. This sounds like it's going to be really fun. So yeah. what can what can audiences expect on the program? Pat, why don't you why don't you tell us what some of the sounds are? Because you are also a, very much a singer well, and participator. Yuri, you can talk or, about the choral music. Okay. And we have another aspect of it that maybe I could talk about after. Okay, okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, as I mentioned, we have a musical journey mm-hmm. through uh, all the provinces. And uh, we have, um, the, the concert program is sort of designed with with two main streams, the uh, original compositions of Canadian, some Canadian composers and arrangement of the folk songs, which probably is the best combination of, 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 of things at that point. And we start with, obviously, we start with uh, uh, music, uh, influenced by indigenous themes. And we have uh, Derek Healy's uh, uh, Salish song and uh, um, Inuit hunting song. And then we have uh, a composition by our own Andrew Balfour. Yeah. uh, Who I ran into today at the park. It was great. (laughs) Which called Helak. And apparently the translation of that word is a sky. And I think it's a reflection, a wonderful reflection of Andrew's view of Nunavut skies. Mm. And uh, as I said, the other part of the program, you ha- we have uh, quite a lot of uh, folk songs. And the interesting fact, I mean, to me, it's very interesting because the folk songs, they can be quite an interesting historical journey of any country you, 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 you know, look for. So uh, that's, that's how I feel about this. Uh, it's very interesting to look through those um, little tiny, tiny things and details and all of a sudden wow that's what happened oh yeah into the deepest roots of Canadian yeah. history yeah, and yeah. to the extended branches as they continue to grow. Very exciting. So, uh, Pat, let's let's talk to you a little bit. This is your first time speaking on the radio. First time on we've, the radio. But we've had you here oh, in yeah. the studio before singing, singing mm-hmm. right? You're a soprano in the Winnipeg Sixers. Oh, you're an alto in the yeah. Winnipeg Sixers. Why did I think you were in soprano? Oh, yeah. Forgive yeah. me. Uh, so how long have you been with the singers? Well, I started singing in 1997. Wow. That's great. <laughs> this is your 20th years. year with that. Uh, yeah, it's my anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. I didn't That's even know. excellent. <laughs> well, you know, I feel like the choir, if you're listening right now, guys, this is Pat's 20th anniversary. Maybe you should do something. <laughs> exactly. I'm just putting exactly. it out there. But so, but you've been ED for now for about six years, you said. Yeah, I started yeah. in 2010. Yeah. So yeah. How, does, how, does you, how do you balance that? How do you balance being in the ensemble and, and taking on these administrative I don't know. I think it works really well because you really know what's going on. You see both mm-hmm. sides. You know, I, no, it seems to work really well. Well, great. Yeah. Well, so yeah. tell us, uh, tell us the thing that you were going to tell okay. us. Well, <laughs> because we were talking about Canadian landscapes, right. and it just came to me one day that it would be a great thing to have 
a display of art, you know, paintings, <gasps> photographs, either of Canadian landscapes or maybe other things by Canadian artists. Mm -hmm. So we kind of put the call out to choristers and board. Did anyone know anyone who would donate something? And one of the choristers, James Magnus Johnson, suggested <gasps> yeah. let's have an art auction. So that's what we're doing. And actually, they didn't know if they would get enough pieces but yeah there's quite a few so I think it's going to be really exciting. So on Sunday there yes. will be in addition to this brilliant program of yeah. Canadian repertoire we have a, a, a whole whack of yeah. Canadian artwork. Mostly by local artists. By Manitoba artists. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. How fascinating. I know so if you've dreamed of having a piece of local art on your wall you could get one. <laughs> at the Winnipeg Singer yes. Show on Sunday at 3 yeah. at West, Westworth United. Yeah. Okay, so w you know what else is super exciting? Not just the fact that we have this announcement of an art auction that's going to be happening now yeah. that I had no idea was happening. Forgive no. me. But uh, also, you have shaped up finally your 17... 18 season. Are you ready to share that with us? Uh, <gasps> pleasure. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm so excited. So tell us what's going on okay. next season. Yuri uh, can. Yeah. Well, I'll Come on back. Turn the mic to me. I'm actually so excited about the next season. I I just I don't even know where to start with which concert. Well, you got to just, just start. Oh, no, let's go chronologically. Of course, let's we'll go start chronologically. chronologically <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I'm so excited. It it's hard to choose. But right. The first concert uh, is the joint uh, performance with the uh, Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. Great. Which I'm super excited about. And we are performing um, two major compositions there. Uh, the Sunrise Mass by Ola, Ola Yelo, Yelo. Right, yeah. And the Te Deum by Arvo Pärt. Breathtaking, yeah, both absolutely, works. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I've been fortunate to to conduct the Manitou Man sorry, Manitoba Chamber Orchestra five years ago, and on the program it was the Berliner Mass by by Parrot. I'm absolutely thrilled that I have this opportunity again to conduct his music with this wonderful, both the two wonderful ensembles. So it's it's just great. And such an incredible choral tradition in Estonia, you know, just his his sensitivity to vocal writing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. exceptional, so exceptional. So what's after that? Well, after that, it's a very interesting celebration of Christmas. Okay. Christmas in the medieval tradition. Fun. <laughs> are, are, are there going to be steins of ale and awesome. legs of We'll do of our best to dress everybody. Great. And <laughs> to have Costumes. everything yes. would, which would relate to that. Amazing. Um, well, I'm just holding my breath before announcing the third concert. Wow. And I'm, again, sorry to repeat it, but super, super excited to say that our very successful series, uh, Icons and Incense, are on for the next season. Right. And we are presenting quite a unique work uh, written by a uh, Russian composer, uh, Alexander Kostalsky. Uh, he was a mentor friend of Sergei Rachmaninoff, who actually, I mean, Kostalsky, who had quite an influence on him while Rachmaninoff was writing his liturgy and uh, famous Vespers, which we performed last year. Uh, last yeah. year mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that composition was written to commemorate the victims of the First World War. Wow. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, the next year is the anniversary of the ending, a hundred years of the ending of the First World War. That's right. And the piece I'm talking about is called the Requiem for the Fallen Brothers. I have never heard of this before. Absolutely, you you wouldn't. <laughs> That's fascinating. <laughs> but I'm I can tell you more about it. I am it super because, excited. <laughs> yeah, because, because what uh, uh, Kostalski, um, it's actually, it was reconstructed from the sketches of his. Okay. Yeah, it was reconstructed a few years ago by some musicologists in Russia. And uh, what Kostalski did, he used two two different streams of, of services there. It's the Russian uh, Orthodox Church commemorative service, mm -hmm. and it's a Latin Requiem Mass. And his thoughts about it, why he did it was, well, because it's a, well, uh, it was a, like the First World War, world global 
event, right? Mm -hmm. A horrible event, but global. So to commemorate the victims of all nations, he decided to combine together the Requiem Mass and the, the Russian Orthodox commemorative service. And the piece is written on three different languages. It's involved English, of course, Latin Mass, traditional Latin Mass, and Russian commemorative service. And even more to that, it is so unusual, but it is written with organ. Amazing. Can't wait. <laughs> and where is this going to be held? Which organ are you going to be using? Uh, well, it's going to happen at Crescent, Crescent for Rouge United Church. With that Church. beautiful wraparound balcony. Yeah. Ugh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. I mean, I love Westminster, but there's something just so charming about Crescent for Rouge. Absolutely. Oh, I love that space. So what's the fourth concert? The fourth, uh, the, the fourth concert called Concentrating on Youth. Oh. Which, which I think is absolutely beautiful and important thing to do uh, to bring the younger generation to our concerts, to engage with them, to make them aware somebody uh, of what's happening in the choral world and right. how, how things are interesting in choral singing. Mm -hmm. And we will have two guest choirs for that concert. Fun. And youth choirs, of course, and it will be joint uh, joint pieces uh, to perform, and all bunch of nice and interesting music. A great potpourri, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, when when will we be able, we be able to see uh, the new season uh, on your website? Well, pretty soon. Pretty uh, soon, yeah, yeah. passing. Yeah. So it'll be posted pretty pretty shortly. Yeah. Yes. Probably after the concert on yeah. on Sunday. Okay, yes. so your sneak preview here on Classic 107, exactly. exclusively in the Diamond Lane. You got to hear about the magical 1718 season of the Winnipeg Singers from Pat Ray, executive director, and it's her 20th anniversary of being involved in the Winnipeg Singers. So choir get on it and <laughs> Yuri Klaas the artistic director uh, it's always a pleasure to have you both here uh, and why don't we play a, a little bit of something that is going to be on that first concert we have a morsel of that Ola Yelo uh, sunrise mass yes. uh, so we're going to play the spheres in this recording uh, of course unfortunately not the Winnipeg singers yet but you'll be able to see that live in the fall very very exciting uh, Nigel Short conducting Tenebrae and the Chamber Orchestra of London in the spheres of Ola Yelo. And we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 